Hey folks, it's Maxwell here and welcome to another TW9 video. It's time for the world to end. It's AW World's End. It's our final pay-per-view of 2024. It's not actually that lot on the show. It is only 13 segments, but we did only book, I think, 8 matches, 5 segments. So, yeah, quite short compared to the usual AW show. But looking forward to it. It's going to tie up a lot of things. Um, and then, as I say, we are straight into a pay-per-view again next week with Wrestle Dynasty. So the plan for that one is basically because obviously it'll be based in Japan. We'll bring a lot of people in from New Japan. We'll bring people in from CMLL. There won't really be too much storyline stuff. But the good thing is, after that, it's a big break to the Grand Slam in Australia. That's when the stories are going to happen, of course. On the Tuesday, if I get my dates right. No, on the Wednesday. That's when a lot of people come back from injury as well. So yeah, we'll have a very different roster in just a few days' time. So the other thing to report as well is the situation with Mick Foley and Hangman. If it wasn't for Eurosport India, we could have got away with the death match. So I believe the most extreme match I could get away with, I think, is a Texas death match. So not the worst, but obviously a lot less in terms of what I was looking for. But we'll see how it goes anyway. Because uh we're gonna be bumping. But anyway. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is AW World's End 2024. So it's 19,611 fans in the Bridgestone Arena, and we are going straight in with the Tag Team Championships on the line. Dax Harwood, of course, had his strained wrist, so Cash Wheeler's going to join him with a broken hand. Great. Anyway, and about they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, the Kings of the Black Throne defeat FTR in 1353 when Malachi Black submitted Dax Harwood. I was going to play on that wrist and make that the cause of the submission victory. I still made it steal the show to try and obviously big up for Dax being held down or slowed down by the injury and it gives a fifth defence of the World Tag Team titles to the Kings of the Black Throne. So a 71 for the wrestling, a 55, 53 for the crowd and a 66 overall for the segment. It'd be interesting to see how long we lose Cash Wheeler with the broken hand. But performance wise, very good stuff from Malachi and especially Brody King bringing a 77. Thanks, Orange. Next up, in about, they had some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Will Ospreay and Ricochet defeat the Hurt Syndicates, Bobby Lashley and Powerhouse Hobbs in 1833 when Will Ospreay pinned Powerhouse Hobbs with a hidden blade, but this was set up because the two men that were going to give the numbers advantage to Ospreay and Ricochet was Mark Davis on his return and Kyle Fletcher. Both of them have turned baby faces. They have aligned with Will Ospreay and Ricochet, and it gives them the victory. So a 72 for the wrestling, a 53 for the crowd, and a 73 for the segment. Ospreay bringing an 88 performance, Ricochet 33, Lashley and Hobbs uh, with some good performances as well. Slowly gains heat. And of course, it is going to be just one segment, so I hope it doesn't flop. Kyle Fletcher. Success. Mark Davis. Success. Perfect. Because you always worry that there's too many that are quick turns, but it's like I think Mark Davis is just back from injury. Fletcher was off TV for a prolonged period of time. So it was a good chance to... I hope that's more a thing in this, like if you keep them off television for a period of time you can get the turn straight away rather than having to build it up after a lot of segments. So you've got four four people now aligned here, Osprey, Ricochet and Aussie Open. And then you've got Lashley, Powerhouse Hobbs, Shelton to an extent MVP as well. Never know though, the Heart Syndicate may look to expand at one point. And then after it, the four on four beat down. And the baby face, he's stand tall. So 52, Fletcher, Davis, Ricochet and Osprey standing tall. Next up was the women's world title on the line. It was a decent matchup that saw Mariah made defeat Tony Storm in 1743 with a reverse bulldog. Fifth defence of the belt for Mariah May. I just wanted to tie up the stuff with Tony. We can move Tony on to different things. But as I say, it just gives Mariah the end of that chapter and lets her continue the title reign. So 61 for the wrestling, 52 for the crowd. And a 64 for the segment. I'm hoping, like, over time we can build Mariah up as well, so it's only going to benefit her in the long run. More women's action next, and this one deliver, which I'm absolutely delighted to see. In a wild brawl, they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. 
Athena defeated Chris Statlander in 1231 with the O-Face. It gives her her second defence of the TBS title. They brought a fantastic 69 performance to the wrestling, a 54 for the crowd and a 73 for the segment. Both of them have good brawling start, especially Athena, which is why I wanted to go with the wild brawl with the, with the, the woman. Athena brings an 80. Fair enough, her and Chris have good chemistry together. That obviously lifts the match and uh, benefiting from being an amazing forum. But I'd certainly say giving her the chance against Mercedes was good to start with. But she's absolutely knocked out of the park. And she's probably one of my key wrestlers so far in the save as Athena. So, yep, true to form basically because she's obviously been incredible for Ring of Honor. Next up, it was a good matchup. That saw the final of the Continental Classic, and obviously the Continental Championship on the line. And Okada defeats Samoa Joe in 14 13 with a Rainmaker. It means Okada wins the Continental Classic and he makes defence number 9 of the Continental Championship. So I just felt like it was sensible to keep the belt on Okada for a wee bit longer. Um, when he loses, it's going to be interesting because of the no interference rule. But a 69, a 58, and a 72. Overall, it's pretty good stuff. Okada brings a 78, so that's good to see. I'm sure I'll find somebody and then we can move Okada towards the world title. But again, there's obviously just waiting for certain things to pop up, certain wrestlers to become available, and then you've got some directions you can go in. And then we have a little moment where Okada receives the Continental Classic trophy. We'll just call it a trophy and obviously gets to keep his belt. So that is a 70 rated segment. I can't even mind what they used to present the Continental Classic if it was just the title, but we'll say there's like a trophy. We'll just go with that. It sounds cool. Next up, we have a little hype package. And it's just documenting the feud between, obviously, John Moxley and Wheeler Utah. I just felt like that was a good way to introduce it. We can look at, obviously, the big matchup at the last pay-per-view as well, where Wheeler Utah made that critical mistake and cost Brian Danielson his full-time career. So a 51 for that as we head into Moxley versus Utah. And they have absolutely delivered. It was a matchup that had great wrestling and good heat, but John Moxley defeat Willow Utah in 13-29 with the Paradigm Shift. A 77 for the wrestling, a 61 for the crowd, and a 79 segment overall is fantastic. Utah brought a 70, Mox brought an 84, and the storyline has advanced and gained a bit of heat. And the two had great chemistry, which boosted it as well. So that's good to know. After, obviously, you and Okada not meshing, but him and Moxley do. Especially when, obviously, it's Moxley's more of a brawler and you is more of a, a technician. But I don't, I don't want to put you over straight away. I think and I, and the issue with this is, like, you, you need to still have a lot more, kind of, the heels getting the better of him and then he can maybe have the great comeback. But I feel like it's better that Moxley wins here for the long-term idea I've got in my head. If, if I was playing it just for the game, then I Utah put the put youngster over, of course, but I do want to try and tell some stories that I've got in my head, so hopefully hopefully this all ties together in the end. This was actually not too bad. And about they had good heat and decent wrestling, Hangman Adam Page defeated Mick Foley in a Texas death match in 837 when Mick Foley was pinned with a buckshot lariat. How can he be pinned with a buckshot lariat and then not beat the 10 count? We'll just say it was the kind of beat the 10 count. Uh, the match was designed to tell a specific story. 60 for the wrestling, 58 for the crowd, and a 66 segment. I think for a Mick Foley match in 2024, it is pretty damn good. Foley the 45, Hangman obviously carried it with a 74. Mick was really off his game though, and I'm assuming we'll probably get a penalty for... Obviously not having wrestled in forever ever. I was going to give him like a wee match against Brandon Cutler, but decided against it. But both guys took crazy bumps. Hopefully none of them have been injured. And if I just go here... Holding back because it's storytelling, fair enough. Because you're kind of telling the story like he's a psychopath and he's, well, no much better. And obviously Mick's going to have like a poor physical condition and... Declining physical, but it's not the worst. Obviously, good storyline heat as well. But yeah, pretty cool to do that. And then we have a little five minute angle. Just Mick Foley getting taken back, selling the injury because obviously he's taking a mega bump and he's not answered the 10 count. And he gives a wee thumbs up to say that he survived. So that was a 51. And our main event 
And about they had great wrestling and good heat, Claudio Castagnoli defeats Darby Allen in 25-41 by pinfall with a neutraliser. Claudio Castagnoli makes the first defence of the AW World Championship. So the most important thing here was these two delivered, and that's with Claudio off his game. So we could have saw Claudio possibly into the 80s, so these two were a good match together. The storyline advances gains heat. But yeah, just I feel like these two I think faced before and it wasn't very good. It was like high 60s, so I was a bit worried. But obviously I've booked both of them pretty strong. They're getting over on this. Obviously Claudio will get a good bit off of Brian. And I just feel like you, we can hopefully rely on Claudio to have some great performances to gain his pop and, and have a good run with the belt as well. And I need a strong promo. It's not the strongest promo in the world, but I'll still take it. It was really just a case of Claudio and Mox just saying that we end the show with the BCC taking over. If you think this was bad so far, just wait to 2025 and you see what this company's going to look like as we mould it into our image. Basically just nobody's going to stop us kind of part of. And that was a 64. So, despite all the places we have the show being broadcast, we'd only gain pop in one region. I'll need to look into that. Because obviously a 76 is way above where we should get. It could just be a case of, with certain coverage, it's not a lot to, to gain pop, if you get me. It's like maybe only like 0.5 or point whatever. So, we'll look into that. As I say, we'll probably make more popularity from our specials. But I still want to have kick-ass pay-per-views anyway, so that's always going to happen. We'll, we'll figure out what the issue can be. Probably, I think it is the case in even better pay-per-view deals, but it's cool. So, you can see there we had... Not one title change. But you did get the turn of Davis and Fletcher. And Mick Foley taking a mental bump. So, we'll address the locker room and we'll say to Darby Allen and Claudio Castagnoli. I don't know, it's going to say great. Darby's pleased, Claudio's pleased. Injury review, broken hand. So, both of FTR have the injuries to work through. 855,000 profit, so I'll take that, that's not bad. Oh wow. Oh wow. If you're, if you're wondering why I went, oh wow, uh, they just <laughs> announced MXX Collections partner at Wrestle Dream when it was Rico. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's how much I'm enjoying this save, but that's where we're at. But uh, South East, uh, 66. So that's pretty good there. And we'll do our media scrum. How concerned are you by the off night that Cash Wheeler had? Uh, everyone is nice, nice off. It seems like AEW's World's End was a successful show. I would say it was a huge success. The response goes well to the locker room. How concerned are you with the off night that Mick Foley had? Same answer again. In fact, I'm sure it's a one-off. Oh, currently the average age of the big stars in AEW is on the older side, being 39 years of age. With so many wrestlers no longer in their prime, don't you think about don't you need to be thinking hard about where the next crop of stars will come from? So, I'm going to say the pertinent isn't particularly old for a professional wrestler. I will say, you'll see where this goes, but I need to build people up, you know what I mean? Like, realistically, the only major stars I have is Brian and Will. So when you average their age, it's probably a bit lower than that, but obviously you had in like Jericho, etc. But... I'll get there. It's fine. I don't think Fetterney is old for a professional wrestler. When you get so many that are performing at such a high level that are probably older than that. Looking at the big stars in AEW, only one is under the age of 30. Surely that must worry you. I like, we've got to be fine. Ah, oh, we've got plenty of young talent. Grab the brass ring. Like, I think like, the game doesn't realise, like, I have an idea, like, Daniel Garcia's TNT champion, he's going to get there. You know what I mean? There's other youngsters that are going to get the push, but we need to get the company popular. What does it, Brian Cage is annoyed. Um, people are going to be unhappy time to time, that's the nature of the business. Basically, once I get a good bit of money, I'll just give Abdi, like, a 10k bonus and just say, right, Abdi, stop trying to 
fight our, our morale officer, which is of course in this case is Prince Nana. But I, I was happy with that one. I'm intrigued now because um, we obviously have the P, the Power 500 and we also have the AW award, so I'm intrigued to see what these will be like. But I'm going to do that in a separate video, I think. So Dax is recovered and Cash is injured, so that's fine. He's going to be able to continue to wrestle, so we'll probably give him some sort of match at um, Wrestle Dynasty. But show itself, draw a lot of praise. Azumi has become the high speed champion. We have concluded a deal to keep Smart Mark Sterling, and we'll do the same with Serpentico. Kenna leaves MLW, Daniel Luna was alone at DPW, so it's a lot of loans ending, so Sammy's done the ROH. Dustin's done. What? I swear I gave him a contract. Uh, my champion doesn't have a belt. Uh, when did this happen? Well, this is awkward. Ah, that's fine. Oh, yikes. Oh well, Daniel Garcia is going to be a two time TNT champion. I swear I gave him a new deal. Oh well. Maybe I was caught off. Oh, we've got a few things here. Adam Page talks well, that's fine. June figures, P per view virus 0.36. Warning, your pay per view buy rate in at least one region was reduced because AW have run so many pay per view events in the last month. The fans have became jaded. All right. Could that be in America? Might it might actually be in there. I think the worry is by the oh, well. Well, the next show is going to be in cable vision, which will be pay per view. Ah, well, maybe maybe America. So uh, good luck, guys, because there's pay per view next week, and then obviously a a big break to thingy. But that's why with Daniel Garcia. Hopefully, that deal done quickly. I'm assuming my TNT Championship is vacant, so uh, Athena is a two-time Women's Champion, a uh, TBS Champion, and it looks like we're going to have the same with Daniel Garcia. Well, at least it'll help his prestige anyway, if he's trying to get in the Hall of Fame. So that was embarrassing. But uh, that's it for this particular episode. As I say, we'll be back. I'll probably do the awards first. In fact, how will we work it? I think I'll do the awards separately if it's long enough. If it's not long, a long enough video, then I'll do the awards alongside Dynamite and um, Collision. And then obviously Wrestle Dynasty will be on its own. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Three thumbs up with people appreciated. Remember, check out the Fantasy Booker subreddit, Grey Dog Software forums, twdb.com and bethebooker.net. And don't make the same mistakes I do. And forgot to give your champions new contracts. See you later. Bye-bye.